1045 Pendleton Street. Lord, we thank you for our pastor, Robert Green, and for his lovely wife, Vicki, our First Lady. And Lord, we ask that you be with Pastor Green as he teaches Bible study and be with each one that will participate in the study of your word. We ask that you create in us clean, clean hearts, Lord. Renew your spirit within us and have your way in each of our lives. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 We bless God. Amen. We bless God for all that he is doing. I'm already excited. I'm already excited about tonight. I just I just feel it in my bones uh, that God is, is releasing something in the atmosphere. And he's making us aware that it's right there, right in front of us tonight. And I just thank him in advance for what he's doing. We're going to reflect a little bit, amen, on Sunday's uh, message and, and share what we'd like to share. And then God has led us this week to, to reach back and begin to unpack even a larger section of the word, even containing the word from Sunday. I said, Lord, that, is that going to be redundant? He says, unpack it, and you will see. So I was, I'm like, okay, we'll unpack it. So uh, I just thank God for leading us down this road to, to not only reflect on Sunday, but go back and unpack some of those variables around that message that's going to bless us in Jesus' name. I know it has to be a blessing. Because nothing he does is not without blessing us. So I just thank God for that. So if someone would read for me, the text from Sunday was 1 Samuel 17, verses 31 to 37. And we'll have a reflection and then we'll move on into the lesson. I'll read it. Okay. Starting from verse 31. Yes. Then David's question, I'm reading from the NLT. Then David's question was reported to King Saul, and the king sent for him. Don't worry about a thing, David told Saul. I'll go fight this Philistine. Don't be ridiculous, Saul replied. There is no way you can go against this Philistine. You are only a boy. And he has been in the army since he was a boy. But David persisted. I have been taking care of my father's sheep, he said. When a lion or a bear comes to steal a lamb from the flock, I go after it with a club and take the lamb from its mouth. If the animal turns on me, I catch it by the jaw and club it to death. I have done this to both lions and bears. And I'll do it to this pagan Philistine too, but he has defied the armies of the living God. The Lord who saved me from the claws of the lion and the bear will save me from this Philistine. Saul finally consented. All right, go ahead, he said, and may the Lord be with you. Amen. 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 Glory to God. We thank God for the word. Uh, any thoughts, anybody, anything anyone wants to share about Sunday's message, the text we just read? Do you remember any, any of the points, any, any of the uh, points that were made about the topic? <laughs> Can you believe that he was prepared the way he was? I just like the, the idea of fighting, you know. Mm -hmm. You know, I'll fight anyway, but I ain't talking about that kind. I'm talking, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm talking about the, the, the good fight of faith. Uh, you know, just not giving up, just just fighting. Uh, I know this is it's a spiritual wall, and sometimes you got to you got to go in, like, you know, the people say. But uh, mm -hmm. the idea that God will put a giant, I think you mentioned Giant Sunday. Yes, yes. Uh, he'll put a giant there. Uh, 
so that you can fight. You got to fight your way sometimes. You can't just give up. You got to fight. You got to. You got to believe God. You got to trust Him and fight. This is a faith fight. And uh, we just can't give up. I mean, I know people say the fight is already won, but we still got to fight. I remember Bishop preached a while back. Uh, Valor's not ours, but you still got to fight. Amen. And you kind of brought that up again, Pastor Green, Sunday, when you talked about the battle is not ours. But you got to fight. Yeah. It sounds like it's, it's uh, what you call it, uh, speaking against each other, but it's not. It's, it's, you just got to fight. You cannot give up. You cannot let the enemy have his way. You cannot let him, you cannot come into agreement with the, it's power in agreement. Mm. So if the enemy tells you you lost and you say, oh, yeah, you're right. You already lost. You have to fight. This is a mind war, too. The enemy has a way of playing with our minds and make us think we lost and we can't make it, that we can't <laughs> get it, that we can't, you know, that we can't trust our God who is all power. You have to fight. You got to fight. I'll fit, let somebody else talk about spring. Um. <laughs> well, well, that was one of the points I made was we were born a fighter because we have to fight. We have to fight. I, I think that's sometimes we get confused when, when we think of Christianity and humility. We think of passivity, of being passive. But we are born to fight. And, and yes, every one of the giants we face, those giants were in the land that they were going into because God allowed them to be there. He didn't have to, he didn't have to let them live. But the song said, he didn't have to let me live, but he allowed those giants that we face right now in our every days, he allowed them in our lives. They just didn't show up, they just didn't pop up. Some we even had a little, uh, something to do with could we sometimes could be um, almost create giants for ourselves but even those giants were allowed from our actions to be created in our lives what do y'all think about that are, are you are you fighting or do you think you should not be fighting <laughs> I'm glad I brought that. I know y'all tired of me talking about that bail, but that was a giant for me. And I'm glad I fought that because a lot of good things came out of it, including a raise. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I fought in Jesus' day. I didn't just go in my own strength. That's another thing. We can't go in our own strength. We got to fight according to his will and purpose. But he mm -hmm. puts the giant there. I'll give you a screen. So that yeah. we can go, uh, let me see. Some of our weaknesses show up as giants. Mm -hmm. And until we get past that, you know, you're going to keep fighting. I'm going to say that again. Some of our weaknesses show up as giants. Mm -hmm. But he said, what? When we weak, what? He's strong. Yeah. He's strong. So we got to be weak so he can be strong. In us, mm. so we can't go on our own strength. I'm finished. Go ahead, that's great. No, no, I'm, I'm just excited. I, I, I like to uh, piggyback on what to see is saying because it's something that right in those scriptures that we miss. David didn't get caught up in the fact that he used his club and and was able to strike the lion and the bear. He said that the Lord delivered him from the paw of the lion and the paw of the bear. Mm -hmm. His confidence was not in his, not in what he could do. But and who delivered him and gave him the strength to do it? Yes, and that's the key. We have to, we have to remember, not us. Even though we're in the fight, it's the God that's de delivering us in the midst of the fight. And and mean? also, uh, when you when you think about it, uh, I was reading some information last weekend about the uh the books in heaven that that god has for us he's already put in it what we can do 
And all we have to do is just do what he tell us to do, and we will be the victor. We will win. And also, uh, <laughs> talking about uh, the fight of faith, uh, it was talking about uh, Sunday. He was talking about God gives us the power to do what we need to do. And we don't think about it because we think we look at ourselves and say, I can't go up against that person. But if you think about what you are in God, he's already put in you what he knows you can do and you can fight and you can win. And just, just like David, David did things step by step. And he knew what what he could do because the animals helped him when when they came to attack his sheep. So he knew there was nothing impossible with him, even that big giant, because they was coming up against him. And God had given him the power to beat whatever that came up against him. Amen. 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 Could you imagine seeing a list of all your giants? I'm talking about the ones that you've already had to battle and the ones that were yet to come. Could you imagine seeing what God sees and knows every giant? I was sharing that today with someone, that every giant that you are going to encounter. When I say giant, I'm not talking about anything that's like, uh, uh, how should I say, uh, from left field. Every problem, every trial, every tribulation, everything you go through or going through, God already knows. Amen. He already knows. And he designed us to be fighters. So while we're snotting and crying and crying out to God, he's, he's yelling at us saying, well, fight then. Why Amen. are you not fighting? Mm -hmm. Why? Because David could have turned and ran and just been calling on God's name as he ran for some place to hide from the giant. Amen. But, but the Bible says he went after it. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I just want to kind of put that perspective out there because we, 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 we think of those giants as being some odd occurrence those once in a lifetime type of things. No, we face giants every day. There's a giant in everybody's life right now. Maybe you need to introduce yourself to it. <laughs> Hello, giant. <laughs> Maybe I need to... And I'm gonna tell you something else and I'll let you comment. We are sometimes Christian and superstitious. Well, I ain't gonna talk about it. I ain't gonna try to wake it up. I ain't gonna mention that. No, don't call his <laughs> name. Because if he, you know what I mean, if you don't speak it into his, you ain't gotta speak it into existence. Don't you know your words will not speak it into existence? God will not allow it. We're not more powerful Amen. than God. Neither is the giant. Amen. So you can call a bagnard, you can call Satan, you can call demons, demons, and not be like, I done woke it up now, uh-oh, I better, better get ready. No, God is in control. We're Amen. afraid sometimes to speak against things Amen. because we think we're going to stir it up. No, God is already in control of how stirred up it can be or can't be. Amen. Amen. I remember I had a giant. I'm not going to be a little more specific, but I, I remember being on my bed crying. I mean, I was literally crying. Help me, God. And uh, God spoke to me just as plain. He said, get up and do something about it. <laughs> and, and all he was telling me was to fight. That's what he was mm. telling me. Yeah. Um, mm. You know, what you crying for? Do something about it. I had the power to do something about it, but I'm in there crying. Yeah, yeah. We're, we're going to unpack a little bit about that. 
later on because these giants have purpose. These are just not things we go through. You know, it can be a marriage giant. It can be uh, a, a worry, a, a psychological giant where you're worried or it, it can be things that, that grieve us. It could even be grief. It could even be uh, uh, sickness. It can be illness. It can be a, a lot of things. Sometimes even pastoring a church can be a giant. Oh, not not. Who's I there? know that's right. I'm just, <laughs> I'm just saying. Choose we get. <laughs> yeah, pass, pastors are leaving churches every week, just throwing mm -hmm. their hands up. I'm done. I'm sick of them. Mm -hmm. I'm just walking away. I, I, I ain't doing it no more. Families of pastors be like, oh my God, I'd be glad when they, you don't understand when a pastor, when someone's passing the church, the church is in a position when a lot of times the family has maybe not a back seat, but a side seat, maybe mm -hmm. a, maybe a, a, not a rear seat, but the forefront of pastoring sometimes requires so much time and availability that the, the family has to be nurtured and, and in such a way that they don't feel like they're not being cared for. And that everybody else is. And sometimes people don't understand pastors have families. I'm just going to put it to you straight. Can I keep it 100 with you? Keep it 100. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. I, I'm, I'm telling you, I, I don't think I've ever been on the phone with Bishop talking and somebody not called him. I don't think it's ever happened. Sometimes he's answered, sometimes he calls him back. It depends on the urgency that he felt at the time. But uh, I'm just saying that that happens. You know what I mean? Uh, it, it's, and it's not a burdensome thing. It's just a real thing. And for some, it becomes a giant, a giant in their marriage, a giant in their family, a giant in their life, wherein they feel like, I don't want to fight this giant. I'm just going to give it up. The statistics say that they give it up every week. Pastors do. Mm. Anybody else on on the on the giant? It sound like a real thing. It is a real thing. Mm. Yeah. Because the 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 whole thing about God putting giants in our path is because. At the end, when the end time comes, we all got to fight. And yeah. he's training us now for the big fight. Amen. And we're going to talk a little bit about the fight and the escalation of the fight and, and understanding there's purpose, not just to prove that we can, but there's purpose and development and fighting. Remember I talked about um, the people that were buffed? Yes. <laughs> so they swole up. They got on tight shirts. You know what I mean? They just look so spiritual. Every other word is hallelujah. But what happens when there's heavy lifting involved? Not, not just these little weights that are going to, you can just keep on lifting them until you make your muscles tighter and bigger. And But when you have to lift something heavy, like a giant, are you just going to look strong or have you developed strength? It makes sense? Yes. Amen. You ever seen somebody that you thought was super spiritual and then you see them break down and be like well i thought what in the world no i'm just i'm being i'm just being keeping it real what you learn is nobody is beyond the breakdown nobody Amen. is beyond you know what i mean no matter how super strong they appear to be you know we know that he gives power to the what faint faint and to them that have no might, he does what? Increases. Uh -oh. <laughs> to, them, to them that have 
Again, he does what? strength. Okay. So he increases. God is our increase. Okay. That means you you it has to start somewhere where it's not at the level that it should be. And God would increase it to the level that it need to be. That makes sense. Amen. Building your spiritual muscles. Yes. He knows exactly Amen. what the giant to send to help to get you built up. So when others counted you out and God counted you in, did, did, did we shout about it? Amen. What, what did you count me into, Lord? What I mean, <laughs> I got I got another giant. See, when he counts oh, you yeah. into something, he counted David oh, into yeah. a fight with a giant. Yeah, just 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 like David had one, two, three, we have many more. <laughs> mm -hmm. Many more battles to fight. But it's God who counted us in. Amen. If the giant shows up in your life, could can it sneak in? No, because uh God has already prepared you for it, but you don't know it. Mm. But he knows you can handle it. That's why he send it your way. Amen. Amen. Well, sometimes we, we don't know, so we get to run it like David did. Mm. <laughs> we don't fight, we run, we retreat. <laughs> Any other thoughts from the message? I always, always say this is too much for me. I just give it to God. Okay. I know he can handle it. Amen. And, and I'm just going to ask a question because it's just interesting to, to hear the answers. And this is for everyone, not just you. What happens when God gives it right back to you? You pray even harder and say, okay, <laughs> I'll do it. <laughs> do the best you can. Yeah, when he when God gives it right back to you, talking about look, this is your fight here, fight. Yep, yep. Not why without you, 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 Lord. Why do you think I gave it to you in the first place? <laughs> a test. It's only a test. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, still I mean, can't do it. Yeah, you can't. But but he wants Amen. to. He wants you to. He wants you to do it with. Him. See, we, sometimes we want to give it back and think that we're done. And I'm not saying that's what you're saying, Joan, but I'm just using it as an example and a question for the group because there's consideration. And we're going to talk about that in a few minutes in the, in the development of it. Michelle, you about to say something? I see you, I see you blinking over there. No, no, I'm just listening. Oh, okay. So when he's counting when when, when I had to fight fight my battle, I was weak. And um I thank God for IHOP. I had a lot of people in IHOP telling me what to do. And mostly it was uh com communicating more with God, getting in the word more and He'll teach you even more what to do. And uh, that that's what I started doing. And then uh, one day, well, it was one night because um, I, I had to fight mine at night. And uh, one night it didn't show up. And I'm thinking, uh oh, what does that mean? Does that mean I won? I had not won. I just won that one. And then uh, another couple of days, he came back. And I'm thinking, okay. So I really got to dig. I, I can't fluff. So I really went deep. And I just thank God. Going deep really helped me. And then um, Raymond gave 
Oh, I can't even think of that scripture he gave us. Oh, it was a scripture of, oh, I can't even think of it. Mm, I'll think of it in a few minutes. But anyway, I think it was Ephesians where you put on the arm, yeah, put on the whole armor of God. Mm-hmm. And uh, I started doing that more. And just by putting on the whole armor, I scared him away. And I just thank God that that's that's one of my that's that's one of my go tos every day now. Amen. Amen. Yeah. And I want to, I want to put something in perspective, Jeanette. And I know this. I know it's already what you mean, but. When the giant leaves, it's not because of anything we did. It's because of everything God did. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. He has an appointed time. Mm. The giant giant won't leave before it's time. Neither Mm. can he arrive before God will allow. So I, I want to put that in perspective because that, that's what where, when, when Gideon was going to fight the people, he said, you got too many because if you win, people will think it was because of who was who you had um, fighting with you, not who you have fighting for you. Mm. Okay. Amen. So, so I wanted to share that because a lot of times we we get troubled by our trials because they seem uncontrollable. Not thinking that they're always not only controllable, they're always being controlled. Mm. Remember what I said, I think I spoke to you one time and I'm gonna go into the greater detail, but it couldn't strangle you. And it could Amen. Kill. Amen. It could, it could just annoy you. <laughs> it was terrifying. I had never right. experienced that. Right. So what God waits is for you to for the fear of it to not be as great as the faith for him. Mm. Okay. So awesome. it only operates on fear. It mm. can't take you out. Amen. It can just take you out of a comfort zone. Yes. But it can't, it can't take you any further than God will allow. Mm-hmm. And, and that's for every giant. I want to make, make that perspective. The giants can't go further than God will allow. Any other comments, guys? It doesn't have to be in agreement with me. I mean, just say, say what's on your heart, what's on your mind. Hey, Amen. Everybody's staring at that giant wondering, hmm, what am I going to do with this giant? Now, I was thinking I heard it preached before in a different way, but he was talking about giants and how on the other side of your giant is your blessing, but you got to get past that giant. Mm-hmm. Mm. Which is another way of saying fight. Yes. Amen. Because if you don't fight it, you're not going to get your blessing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Amen. Amen. That, um, just, just before we segue into the, to the uh, lesson, anybody know why was Goliath even still alive? I mean, anybody have any idea why Goliath was even, you know, Joshua chased down and kill giants in the promised land, right? You guys mm-hmm. remember reading mm-hmm. that? Mm-hmm. Right. So where did where did where did Goliath come from? Hmm. A city called Gath. And if you read in the Bible, it says he chased them and killed them all the way to Gath. 
So God left what? Goliath. Goliath. Left giants, right. Where did he leave them? Okay. Right. And he left that giant and Gal, the, 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 the cousins and the uncles that was the gotten killed. But this giant was, was saved for what purpose? Just for hey. David. There you go. You walking. Your giant is waiting just for you. Mm. Your giant mm. is waiting just for you. Your giant got your name on it. He's looking um, for you. Anybody want to go with me? Mm -hmm. David, yeah. Goliath lived to fight David because somebody lived, amen, that was a giant that was not killed by Joshua who purged the land all the way to Gath. Goliath came out of Gath. If you go back to Joshua, you can, you can read it. You'll see how he chased them. Amen. 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 So, Amen. so we're gonna un we're gonna unpack that a little bit because what I what I want out of the lesson tonight is is for for others to to feel uh, have perspective about the giant that maybe they didn't have before because your giant is really your shout. Not your shout. Your what? Oh. Your giant is really your shout. Oh, okay. Not your shame. Mm. Your, 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 your giant is, is really a point of praise, mm. even though it could be a point of persecution. But we're going to talk about that a little bit because wow. we're going to have to unpack it so we can see this thing a little bit differently. If you never had a giant, what would life be like? Well, it would be great if I never have a giant, yeah. But how could I get stronger? Yep. I would just walk around looking buffed, but I would never be a power lifter. We'll talk about it a little bit, amen. Any, anything else before we move on? Amen. Somebody read for me. Um, we're gonna we read 31, but we'll start back at 31 for those that may have just joined late. But we're gonna go all the way down to 39 because we're we're gonna be talking about the total. And this is another another reason I didn't cover all the scriptures Sunday, but there are some other tested, tried, and true, which is our lesson tonight. So if someone to read First Samuel 17, 31, and let's go all the way down to 39. Amen. Amen. I will, and I'm reading from uh, the NIV. Okay. What What David said was overheard and reported to Saul, and Saul sent for him. David said to Saul, "Let no one lose, let no one lose heart on account of this Philistine." Your servant will go and fight him. Saul replied, you are not able to go out against this Philistine and fight him. You are only a young man, and he has been a warrior from his youth. But David said to Saul, your servant has been keeping his father's sheep. When a lion or bear came and carried off a sheep from the flock, I went after it, struck it, and rescued the sheep from its mouth. When I turned on, when it turned on me, I seized it by its hair, struck it, and killed it. Your servant had killed both the lion and the bear. This uncircumcised Philistine will be like one of them 
because he has defiled the armies of the living God. The, the Lord who rescued me from the paw of the lion and the paw of the bear will rescue me from the hand of the Philistine. Saul said to David, go, and the Lord be with you. Then Saul dressed David in his own tunic. He put, on, he put a coat of armor on him, a bronze helmet on his head. Verse 39, David fastened on his sword toward the tunic and turned walking around because he was not used to them. I cannot go in this, he said to Saul, because I am not used to them. So he took them off. Amen. 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 We thank God for the word. See, as we unpack Sunday's message, and we're really unpacking with additional scriptures, we should reflect on our preparations. And see, it's, it's great we're going to be talking about how David was prepared, but there was also a direct correlation about our preparations for our giants, our preparations for our own giants. And as a result of what God has what already done, what gives us an example or the receipts or the evidence of what God is going to do. An example for the receipts is what he's already done, but it's an example receipt and evidence of what God is going to do, okay? So what will our affirmations be after this lesson? What will our affirmations be after Sunday? So we should walk away from a message affirming something in our lives that helps our perspective change about the content of the message. It, it should be healing. It should be salve. It should be something to make us feel different than we did before. We've all heard the stories, you know what I mean? But how can we apply what we heard to our lives? And that's what we want to talk about, which is always uh, the, the way that God leads me, is to how can I apply this to my life? How can I uh, apply faith and apply it to my life and have a David experience and not just experience what David had. In other words, not just a giant, but how do I become a giant killer? A giant killer. See, David prepares to fight Goliath because he was prepared. I'll repeat that. David prepares to fight Goliath because he was, I'll insert the word, already prepared. So what I'll tell you, when your giant shows up in your life, I'm looking at names from uh, Pastor Stanley to Michelle, Cecilia, Tiffany, uh, Deborah, uh, uh, Bishop, uh, Joanne. Uh, when I look at these, the people that are online, there are others. What I'm, what I'm gonna tell you is, is that when the giant shows up, you are already prepared. Does, yeah. does, does that make sense? Yes. Yeah. 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 Right. yeah. So, so it, it, it's not going to arrive ahead of time. In other words, it, it's not going to be ahead of schedule. All right. It arrives when God allows. Mm -hmm. And that is perfect timing. I said something earlier and I and not only do I hear some moans and groans and some comments, that's when it's time to shout. Wait a minute, Pastor. You, wait a minute. Hold on. Hold on. So you saying when these terrible things happen in our lives, that's time to shout? Yes. Because what that means is God is about to do something miraculous in your life. Amen. And on, top, and on top of that, he trusts you with the experience. Amen. And it, 
Yeah. And it looks like a lot. Yeah. It looks like more than you could even want to encounter. Oh my God, I don't want to go through this. Amen. And, and, and God mm -hmm. is saying, you may not want to go through it, but do you want to go to where I'm taking you? Mm. Amen. Mm. The pathway to where I'm taking you is through this. Amen. Mm. Just some perspective. Just a, some perspective. Because now you can shout because God trusts me with this trial. Oh, he trusts me with this Amen. job. Oh, he trusts me with this fight. Oh, he's already proclaim victory for me, all I got to do is start the swinging. I just got to start the praying. I just got to start the worshiping. I just got to start the giving God praise. I just got to start the giving God. I'm just swinging in the spirit room. I'm just like, because I know that God has already declared victory against my time. Amen. And all that that you said, Pastor, about singing, praying, and doing all that, you have to know that you can do that. Mm -hmm. And then once once you know that you can do that, you know, then you just feel like I can handle it. Because you got this song to stand on, and you got that scripture to stand on, mm -hmm. and you, 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 you got God in you. The hope yeah. of glory. Amen. And, and you know it's going to work. Amen. Amen. And, and it's even it's even more impactful, uh, Jeanette, when you can't handle it. Mm -hmm. Because because now it's like, but I know the, the God I serve can. Amen. I can't carry this burden. Amen. But I know the God that I serve will. Mm -hmm. See, we must first believe that we are prepared. That's, yeah. that's where it begins. We got to believe that the, that the giant doesn't show up and be like, gotcha. <laughs> I snuck up on you. You weren't ready for me, were you? <laughs> you might not have been, but God was. Amen. Yeah. It, okay. You know what, uh, Pastor Green? Good evening, everybody. Good evening, Pastor Green. You know, the uh, something stuck out to me when uh, uh, Deacon Green was just reading the scripture. When uh, Saul put the armor on David, and David was like, "This, this doesn't fit me. This doesn't work for me." And David took his slingshot. He knew what would work for him versus what wouldn't work for him. He trusted in that slingshot. He didn't trust in that armor that that Saul put on him. So that, he that had was experience. Just, yeah, with he had experience stuff. with that slingshot. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. And I, I, I looked at that and I was like, you know, there's certain things that that we trust. We know that we pray and we trust that God is all. Somebody got their community on. Amen. Hey, man. Thank you. I was just giving a hand. <laughs> so we we, we trust in the things that we know, but just like David was, I can't try, I don't, I, I can't do nothing with this armor that you're putting on me. So he knew exactly what he could trust. And if, when it was time to go to battle, he knew what he could trust. And that's just like us, when it's time to go to battle, we know that we can't trust in nothing else. Nothing, nothing else is going to fix what we're going through other than the Lord with his hand on us. Amen. We, know, we know. If we don't know that we know, when we come out of that battle, we'll know that we know what we can trust in and what we can't trust in. Amen. Amen. So, so when we believe, we will speak what? Confidently. And this is yes. what happened to David. When we believe, you know, and, and, and sometimes we feel like we're speaking confidently because we're saying God will take care of it. You know what I mean? But David said that I will fight this giant. That didn't mean the battle was his. That means that he knew he had to fight. Yeah. And those, those words got to Saul. 
Now, when the words which David spoke were heard, they were reported to Saul, and Saul sent for him. You see the setup? So somebody's going to hear your words. Somebody's going to hear your confidence. And then you're going to be in the presence of somebody who's going to doubt everything that you have already said. Mm. Going to doubt all the faith that you've already uh, uh, spoken of. Somebody, because that, that person has to be there, is going to sow some seeds of doubt. Yes. Yeah. You know, That's make exactly you think you're so. crazy. That's exactly you know? what Saul did, tried to do with David. Yeah, yeah. So, so what were what are some of the circumstances that existed for Saul to sin for David? What what's some of the things that happened other than what he said? What were some of the things that were going on that made Saul sin for David? You mean? Are, you, are we speaking about when, are we going all the way back to the point where Saul was being, um, he was being, uh, what's the word I want to use, tormented by that spirit? Are we going all the way back that far? Well, well, we're going back as far as when he started talking about the giant. Oh, Saul okay. heard him talking about the giant and he sent for him. Gotcha. Okay. Mm hmm well, that that giant uh, had been tormenting that that um, the the soldiers for if I think it was if I'm not mistaken it was forty days. So yes. he had the had the soldiers at a standstill. They couldn't go forward, and they were possibly being pushed back. So he had he had progress stopped when it came to the what the soldiers were supposed to have been doing. And right. they were, to be honest with you, they were kind of allowing it because nobody was like standing up saying, you know, he's talking about our God. They weren't doing that. They were just allowing him to talk about, you know, talk bad about, about our God. Right. So, so the giant, the, 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 he has been uh, doing it for 40 days, right? Mm-hmm. And... And uh, what else had happened? The giant was taunting them and been taunting them for 40 days. It, 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 what's the other reason why Saul sent for David? It, it, those, those are part of the reasons as well. Saul, Saul probably sent David because he was sick of the women talking about Saul killed the 10,000. <laughs> I mean, David killed the 10,000 wherein Saul did. Well, well, this is before this is before he, he went to battle and killed the thousands. And this is this is before he fought Goliath. He heard uh, that David had been speaking so confidently and they had been waiting 40 days for somebody to step up against this giant, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so what, did, what did Saul say to try to encourage people to fight the giant? That he was going to give them his daughter in marriage. Oh, yeah. Right, right. And they weren't, whoever fought them wasn't going to have to pay taxes as well. Right. So he was going to give, somebody read uh, for, um, seventh, 1 Samuel 17, verse 25. Yeah, verse 25. Read that for me. Hmm. I forgot all about that. Uh, me too. Now the Israelites first. had 17, verse 25. Right. Read that for me. Now the Israelites had been saying, do you see how this man keeps out, keeps coming out? He comes out to defy Israel. The king will give great wealth to the man who kills him. He will also give him his daughter in marriage and will exempt his family from taxes in Israel. Amen. 
Amen. Is my so, phone going on? No, I think uh, I think Joanne is, has us on hold. You may not know it. Oh, okay. Does somebody reach out to her for me, because if I if I mute her on this side, she won't be able to unmute on her side. I'll give her a call. So. So he had offered them many things and there were no takers, right? No one stepped up. So when he heard about David and what he said, he called David to him. He sent for him. So you can see how in the scheme of things, and I say scheme of things, I'm talking about God's plan. It was for David to be brought before Saul. Now, if, if David felt this way, David could have just ran toward the giant without even having the encounter with Saul. That's right. But having the encounter with Saul is also meant to do what? Show Saul something about who. Mm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's the grain. I'm getting her voicemail. I can't get through. Okay. I'll see if I can do something. What, what I did was I, I put her on mute, and if, if you reach her, oh okay, just Good. let her know that, that she has to ask me to unmute her and, uh, so that she can speak. She'll think so, it's not working. Um, but if she sends, if she asks me to unmute her, she'd have to do it online. She may have to hang up and call back in uh, in order to speak. But you see that the, God's plan was for David, to put his words of confidence and faith in front of Saul. See, one of the issues we have sometimes when we have doubters yeah. in our midst, yeah. we'll let the doubters talk. And we, for the lack of a better term, don't want to be confrontational and just say what we believe. I know my God is going to heal mm -hmm. me. I know my yeah. God is going to save me. I know my mm. God is going to what? Rescue me. And why mm. do I know? Because I got some evidence of all the other times. One of the things everybody <laughs> on this line has, you all have evidence of how God has saved you from something. Amen. You can't be alive yeah. right now if God hadn't saved you from something. Amen. I'm, look, I'm looking at one name, and I, I remember somebody telling me when I was talking about their son being so miraculous, and they said, well, you know, she was a two-pound baby. Mm. Like, hold up, yeah. wait a minute. So you mean she started out as a two-pound baby fighting to live, wow. and then when her baby mm. grew up, she had to fight for the baby. See, y'all, mm. I'm, I'm already yeah. shocked. Wow. Yeah. I'm, already, I'm already shocked. That's awesome. I ain't going to call their name, but y'all may know who it is. They may want to talk about oh, yeah, themselves. We know. But when they started out as a two and a half pound baby. Wow. Mm. Fighting to live. God already mm. knew that there was going to be a giant mm. that she had to fight for her son. Yes. Wow. Mm. I'm, trying to, I'm trying to show you how these giants work. Mm. I'm trying to show you mm. why you need to shout. Because that battle that she won as an infant. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Somebody was fighting for her. Mm. Somebody yes. was sitting Amen. by her side. Yes. Somebody yes. was mm. looking at her in the incubator. Somebody was saying, Lord, mm. raise her up. Lord, give her strength. Mm. Lord, keep her. Yes. Mm -hmm. he shot up, oh, mm. he shot up. Mm. oh, glory to God. I, I, Debra, you may know the baby. I don't know. You may know the baby. <laughs> but I'm just telling you. I know. I'm just yeah, telling too you. Much Two months in the hospital. I, I, I'm telling you. Wow. And then she spent some time in the hospital with her baby. Mm. But she had to what? Fight. Yes. She was, yes. Born, she was born what? A fighter. Mm. Yes. Uh -huh. But guess what? She beat that giant just for the next giant. Now, I ain't going to talk about her giants. Mm. Those giants belong to her. But whatever giants they are, she's fighting right now. She can look back and say, I was a little baby mm. and I beat mm. a giant. Mm. Then the baby came, then the giant came after my baby mm. and I went mm. after her. Mm -hmm. mm. 
and I grabbed awesome. it and I took and I took my baby out of the giant's mouth. Amen. Huh? Jesus. And I slew that giant. When the women of the church came around her in the middle of, of, of service, and God said, have every mother that has ever had a sick baby surround her like a village and pray. Mm. When she got Glory. when she got to the hospital, the, the tube had coughed up. You mean to tell me the angel snatched the tube out mm. and said, he shall live. And, not live. Amen. Amen. and the doctors decided Amen. not to put the tube back in. Mm. That's, That's the kind of God we serve. Oh, you yeah, gotta, yeah. Under, you gotta understand the giants. You gotta understand your fight because these things we we're talking about. David encounter was preparing him for the next encounter. Mm -hmm. And as you know, the giant was not his last encounter. Oh, come on, mm -hmm. somebody. Yes. yes. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Keep coming. Amen. Right, so you can fight the giant and you will win because God is gonna win the battle because you're prepared before that fight. So we forget about yeah. the other fights. We forget about the other fights we had. We, we, we forget about those things we struggled with. We, we forget about those things we overcame and we forget about, and we think we overcame. Mm. But it was God. Mm. Hallelujah. It was right there. It was right there. Pastor Green, it's, it's ironic that you say that because I never even tied my um birth and being a preemie to Cam being sick and having to fight those giants. I never even <laughs> tied that together. So thank you for that. Yeah, and, Amen. And, and, and God showed God showed me that just as clear as day too. When I was mm. when, when I was reading and studying this, and, and what it, what it was is that we're prepared for our giants. Hi, hi, what's up, that giant killer? <laughs> <laughs> we're we're prepared, y'all. You gotta know. I was born to a teenage mother. I was left in an abandoned building. I was raised by a witch. I was on drugs for thirty one years. Those giants had to die. <laughs> so I can be ready for the next giant. And Amen. the next giant. And the next Amen. giant. And the mm. next giant. I'm just trying to help mm. you. And the next giant. And the next mm. giant. That's why now I can shout in the face of a giant. Oh, glory to God. Amen. Hallelujah. Because I got glory. the receipt. Mm. I know say, what oh, God will do. Who are you to, to defy the Israel law? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Woo. But when I left, when I left Jacksonville, they thought I was crazy. He's walking away from an organization. He's walking away from a rank in an organization. The, uh, 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 like a bishop, I had five other churches, and plus, plus, I had my own church, so a total of six churches. I was an overseer. I had all this stuff going on in the organization, but they talked about me. They hell hacked me. They stabbed me in the back, but I still kept going. And and mm. all that I did. When I left Jacksonville, they said, look at him. Look, at him. he ain't going to be no pastor. He wasn't this. He wasn't that. Because I defied the Constitution, which said I should be in the church three years before even becoming an elder. But within the first year, I was not only an elder, I was pastor in the church. God Amen. did that. God did, God did that. Mm -hmm. Then when Probably, I got yeah. to Burning Bush, I wasn't looking for Burning Bush. Bishop called us in the office and he said, God said, if you will accept this church, then I need to give it to you. That was in 2019. Mm -hmm. I want to give you the timeline. This was not in 2022 when he pronounced it. It was in 2019. Mm -hmm. So from the, from the fall of 2019 to I was installed, God had already spoken. Amen. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just sharing. I'm just sharing. Because God knew what the plan was. But he also Amen. knew that there was some giants 
There was some giants. There was some Amen. Jezebel spirits. There was some opposition. <laughs> there was some, I ain't following that so-and-so from Florida. You know what I mean? Somebody said, how you know he's a pastor? Have you seen his paperwork? I mean, we went all through that. Bishop shared every single thing with me. I knew the opposition. I knew the opposers. Mm -hmm. But God gave me peace. Amen. I had his hand on that. And, yeah. and I also want to say this, Pastor Green. Some of us was looking for what you bring to the church. Mm -hmm. Because yeah. Yeah. when when I came to Burning Bush, I said, okay, Lord, you know what I'm here for. And a lot of things happened, and I was disappointed. And nobody kind of said anything about anything. So I said, okay, that's all right. It's going to happen. And sure enough, you came and I said, this is what the burning bush needed. And I was truly grateful. Amen. Well, well I know that everything that happens is in God's control. You know, Amen. I, I, I know that, that I stand on the shoulders of a great man. I stand on the Amen. shoulders of a great bishop. Yeah. And God, through him, brought me there. Amen. And I just think, I thank God that, that I can shout, knowing that whatever adversity that's in my way, God got it. Amen. So and so said this, Amen. guess what? God got it. They're talking about Father, you about that. God got it. I ain't going to mm. plant no seed. I ain't giving to no seed money. Where he get that from? God got it. Mm. I'm just telling you. I hear really good. Mm. I do. Spiritually <laughs> and physically. But sometimes <laughs> not so much physically. <laughs> but but I'm, I'm sharing with you. Why we I got it in more than one way, Pastor. Yeah. God, why we give him gifts? Yeah. You talk about I ain't never asked nobody for a gift. Yeah. The gifts people give freely. Yeah. Amen. But we know the bishop preposition was he didn't want anyone to give him anything. That was bishop. I'm not bishop. I'm not going to stop the blessings, but that's how God had led him, not how God is leading me. So Amen. we have to understand that God is in control. He yes. lays on people's hearts to give me a gift card. That's what God did. Amen. Amen. So I'm I'm just I'm just sharing because these are giants, guys. These, these, these are yes. real giants. These okay? are, yeah. yeah. And they could be hindrances in the body. When we don't face yeah. our giants and call the giant what it is. So when I was a little baby in Christ, I had to fight giants then. Now I'm a pastor mm. in the church. I'm fighting giants mm. now. Mm. Okay? Mm. But I know that there's victory in the fight. Come on, somebody. Amen. And just like I told Tiffany, that giant that she fought as a little baby, but she, she didn't even know she was fighting. Mm. She just knew that she needed to take another breath. Mm. Yes. And she did. But you know, Pastor Green, Pastor Green, like Tiff said, the way you are breaking it down there, I didn't think of it like that either. And for two months that she was in the hospital and they told me to stay home and rest because mm -hmm. I would need to be prepared for her coming home. I did not stay home one day. Mm -hmm. I stayed at that hospital. I had my husband take me to the hospital every day to talk to my baby in the incubator. I was yeah. like, Amen. I got to see my baby. Amen. Amen. I didn't look at it like that. All I know is just had faith and praying and being there. And she came through. Right. Amen. 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 And, and Amen. You, raised, you raised a fighter. Amen. She saw, she, she, she might not have remembered, but she, those little eyes saw a mama fighting. Hallelujah. Those little Hallelujah. eyes saw a mama there when she wasn't supposed to be there. 
Mm. And guess what? And guess what she did? She did just like her mama did. Oh, glory yeah. to God. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yes, <laughs> Amen. Amen. I think about I think about Loretta. I went to the hospital and, and Loretta's daughter's eyes rolled back in her head. And I'm sitting there looking. Mm. And she said, Pastor, did you see her eyes roll back in her head? And I'm over there praying all the time. She's one thing about praying in hospital rooms, you don't be running around knocking over chairs and, and all that. You gotta you gotta become spiritual because it's warfare. You see, I got on my, my, my fatigue shirt. Because you gotta go in the hospital room for warfare. You gotta fight your way in there. You gotta fight for people you ain't gotta even make it known. Jesus. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Father. And she sat there with that rag, mm -hmm. with that rag on her daughter's head, and looking at me, and I'm looking at her, and I just looked at her smile mm -hmm. and nodded my head. Because I got you. I'm fighting right Amen. here. I'm fighting right now. Mm -hmm. Devil, you, you can't have her daughter. You're gonna have to let mm -hmm. her go. Glory. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I'm, I'm just I'm sharing with you because this is a real place yes. of yes. warfare. Yes. Mm. He yes. saw the giant take the lamb, the sheep, and he went mm. after it. Mm. That doctor told Deborah to stay home. She said, oh, no, I'm going after this. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Yes. I'm going yes. to the hospital. I'm going mm. after it. Devil, you ain't going to make me stay home and worry. I'm going to my, I'm gonna keep my eyes on my baby and, and see mm. her all the way through this. And Tiffany did the same thing. You couldn't pry her out of the room. Praise God. She came. She texted me one day. She said, Pastor, I'm coming to church this morning. I said, oh, praise is. God. And she came to church. And when she came to church, there was deliverance. And when she went oh, back to the hospital, that. the angel then snatched the two. They said he coughed it up. Mm. <laughs> I'm talking about the God we serve. Hallelujah. Who rescues Thank us you, from what? The paw mm. of the lion. Who rescues us from what? The paw of the bear. And he uses you yes. to fight. He uses you to fight. And if I could share a story, I know she said it in front of the church. She had to get some doctors straight. Ho, 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 ho. What y'all doing with my baby? Y'all got to tell me something. Yes, she did. She got with them. Mm. Wait a minute, I want another doctor. Give me another opinion. Well, wait a minute, y'all going to do this right. This is my baby. Y'all walking with me? Yes, sir. Amen. Amen. What are you going to do? What are you going to do when he comes after you? What are you going to do when he comes after one of your sheep? What are you going to do when he comes after your bank account? What are you going to do when he comes after your body? Mm. Wow. How do you go after it? How do you go after it? See, how many of you understand God wants unbelievers to hear your testimony? Amen. I done said, said some stuff. I know it's so personal. I see people's eyes rolling their head. I'm like, are they going to pass out? Y'all can't see what I see. I'm facing you. Know, they be like, oh, Lord, did he, just, did he just say that? Oh, my God. Did the pastor just say that? But guess what? I know where he rescued me from. He rescued me from boredom. He rescued me from drugs. He rescued me from poverty. He rescued me from trials and tribulations. He rescued me from homelessness. He rescued my marriage when it was torn. And we would not only fight other people, we fight each other. So um Jesus. And Vicky won. <laughs> yeah, that's another story. That's another story. Oh, Vicky. But, yeah, but, but I'm, I'm, I'm being real with you. Amen. And you got to ask yourself, well, Lord, why you send us a pastor 
that all this stuff has happened to every week. Lord, what is he going to say next? He's been homeless. He's been on drugs. He's been shot at. He's been, what in the world? The evidence. To open our Amen. eyes. The evidence. Amen. How can that much happen to one person so that you can be the mm. evidence Amen. of the power of God? Amen. God. You don't need to put salt in there, man, for that. Just mess it all. I heard somebody want to make a comment. Amen. <laughs> Please feel free to interject whatever you like. Hey man, we 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 we're not we're not a how uh, uh, I should say I, I don't just lecture. I want to know what the spirit of the spirit of God is saying to each and every one of us. Amen. Amen. Because I'm not the only one that face giants. Everybody Hallelujah. on this line has Amen. faced giants. You face it one now. You face it one now. Amen. And after that one, there's going to be another one. And after yeah, that yeah. one, there's going to be another one. What you yeah. going to do when the giant comes after you? See, see we keep our secrets. But, yeah, it's right. We keep our secrets sometimes in prideful ways, not because God doesn't want your witness, because of what people may say or think. Yeah, That's why... God is writing my book. I got a book that's coming out soon, uh, as soon as they finish writing it for me, of my life story. Amen. And that's something God led me to do because it should be healing, not boastful, not look at Amen. me, not look at what God has done for me. No, look at what God is going to do for you. Hallelujah. It's not about me. It's all about God. So, have you ever had a child say something that made you think or, or you know was from God? It seemed ridiculous when, when David told Saul what, what he said, you know what I mean? And Saul was like, man, you, are you, you're a child. What are you talking about? Have you ever had a child say something that made you think or you know what's from God? Yes. Yes. Yes, definitely. I'm, I'm going to share an instance of something that happened. And this was years ago. I was in Orlando, my wife and I were visiting, um, and we were at this uh, this uh, resort area, and we had some kids run around us, and the kids belonged to the people we were there visiting with, and the youngest one of the bunch, I I'm not sure how old she was, Vicky, she was probably like four or five, wasn't she? I yeah, she was, yeah about, she was about four. Not that young. Yeah, she was running around, she stopped in front of me, she says, I know how old you are. And I looked at her and I smiled. I said, no, you don't. She said, yes. I said, how old am I? She said, you're 94. <laughs> and I looked at her, I'm like, 94? <laughs> I'm not 94. She says, yes, you are. You're 94. And you wanna know the very next thing that baby did? She walked up to me and she put both of her hands on my head. Uh -huh. And she started praying. Uh -huh. She so started good. praying. Yeah. Am I telling the truth, Vicky? Yeah. That's the true story. She started praying. She said, Lord, help him understand he's 94. Go on. Lord, guard him Amen. and keep him. <laughs> Lord, help him because he's 94. She prayed for me and said, amen. My mom said, I'm going to sit there with my mom wide open. And she ran off and started playing again. Praise the Lord. What I'm saying yeah. is God will send you a message. Did I say that when I said that I wasn't 94, God said, what makes you think you won't live that long? What mm, makes right. you think mm. my power will not keep you till you're 94? What makes you mm. think your life will be cut short but, 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 but because your daddy's was, because your mother's was? What made you think that you won't win that battle over life? I'm going to send a mm. child to tell you how old you are. Mm. So 
we have to keep our eyes and ears open and understand that God will speak to, you know, they say fools and babies, you know, mm -hmm. but anyway, but he'll definitely speak mm -hmm. through babies. We have to listen and understand what God is saying. It, can anybody yeah. tell me why, tell me why weren't David's brothers able to give the same testimony since it stands the reason they were all at some point tending the sheep? Could you remember the youngest in the family would tend the sheep? So they all the brothers had at some point been the youngest, okay? And the, when they got older, there was another youngest that tended the sheep. So why weren't the, the brothers able to give the same testimony as David about the, the, the lion and the bear? Anybody? They weren't the chosen ones. Yeah. He didn't choose them for they what? Forgot. They forgot. They, they could have forgotten, but, but oh, they didn't giant. choose. They, they, they mm. didn't choose the other brothers for, for what? To face Not to be giant. king. For that giant. Giant, right. Mm. There's yep. some giants you got to fight in your life that your brothers and sisters ain't never had to fight. Mm. So it is. Right about that. Mm. <laughs> There's some giants you're going to have to fight. And guess what? That's your giant. Mm. I'm looking mm. at you here, Michael. Michael, that's your giant. That's your giant to fight because you were developed, designed, and prepared for your giant. It ain't nobody else's. Why is this always happening to me? It's your giant. It ain't nobody else's but yours. Your, your finances is your giant, if it is. Your marriage is your giant, if it is. Your health is your giant, if it is. Your family is your giant, if it is. Your giant got your name on it. Just like they said, my blessing got my name on. <laughs> yes, Lord. So do your giant. Mm -hmm. Pastor Green. Yes, sir. A uh, question arises, uh, being that your, your giant is your giant, you ultimately, when it comes to another human, you have to basically fight that giant sometimes alone. And I don't say alone absent from God. I mean, alone, meaning like a friend or a family member that you can pull in and explain your, mm -hmm. your situation to them. Like they can understand it, but they, when it all comes down to it, if it's your giant, they really don't understand the full jokes of it because it's your giant. And it can be a lonely thing sometimes. And can, can, I, can, I, can I unpack that a little bit? Yes, sir. Absolutely. A lot of times we create that for ourselves because we don't want to tell mm. nobody about that giant. Mm. We want to tell just a couple of people we trust because mm -hmm. we don't want mm. nobody to know what we're going through. See, the Bible mm. says that we should pray ye for one another. He said that we should pray what? Without ceasing. Mm. And see, it's one thing to have a giant and, 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 and enter into the Holy of Holies where the anointing and the spirit is going to open up and others that don't know your situation will pray for you without knowing the detail. And then there's another thing to say, I'm going to stay off because I don't want to even look like what I'm going through. So if I stay over here, won't nobody know I'm going through this or I'm going through that. Mm -hmm. That's the trick of the enemy because we're supposed to edify one another. I said it Sunday. We're supposed to praise, pray, yeah, worship, but edification comes from your brother and your sister. This so, is edification as we speak to one another. Amen. So with that, so with that being said, can, am I unmuted? Go ahead. Okay. No, go ahead, Stanley. So, so with that being said, there shouldn't be an actual giant that you fight on your own with nobody to call to pray for you or to pray with you. We should be That's able what? to say, we should be able to ask people, 
and let people know, hey, keep me in your prayers. Okay. And we as being believers mm -hmm. should be praying. We don't have to know the details. Right, exactly. Okay? But we mm -hmm. should be praying. But we should be led by God because God, he wants people to know the mm -hmm. victory. Right, right. It's not exactly. a silent victory where you keep all the victory and the spoils to yourself. Right. Even after you have the victory, God wants you to tell somebody because somebody needs to know that you overcame by what? The blood of the Lamb. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Amen. And because I did, you can. Mm -hmm. And because yes. I did, you will. Yes. So we have to we have to be open to the spirit and, and, and not lend ourselves to boasting. I got mm -hmm. a sermon coming up Sunday mm -hmm. about boasting, but anyway, that's another topic. But but we have to understand that these giants were prepared for us. How, do, how does this sound like Jonah's story? Anybody know? So somebody get Jonah. The fish is swallowing them up. Yeah, somebody read Jonah 1 and 17. Yeah, it's about the fish. How, how does this reference Jonah's story? This giant was prepared for him. Exactly. Somebody read that scripture for me. Jonah 1 and 17. It was, it was prepared. I got it. Okay, read I that got it. Me. Jonah 1 7, 17. But the Lord provided a great fish to swallow Jonah. And Jonah was inside the fish three days and three nights. That's the Amen. NIV version. Because the Lord had what? Prepared a great fish to swallow up Jonah. God has prepared some situations that are going to swallow you up. Oh, Lord, Pastor, don't say that. Yes, I'm saying it. You can write it down. You can believe it. You're not immune to it. It's going to swallow yeah. you up. But guess mm. what happened to Jonah when they, when they swallowed him up? They said it was so many bellows bellows of seaweed and debris that was inside the belly of the fish it had kept Jonah from drowning mm. <laughs> wow. kept Jonah from drowning so he not only pre he prepared the fish so inside the fish there was safety wow come on somebody and while he was there in safety, the rest of the scripture said Jonah prayed. Mm -hmm. You know, that, that kind of reminds me of uh, what we were discussing a couple of weeks ago with David running into that uh, running into that cave. Yeah. And how yeah. We, we said that that cave was prepared for David because yeah. nothing mm -hmm. else would have reached David until he found himself in that cave. Yeah. And so how long said Go ahead. I'm, I'm just reading ahead like you are where you are now where you pray yeah. to the Lord from inside yeah. the fish. <laughs> yeah. He couldn't pray drowning. Yeah. <laughs> but he said the Lord heard me from the land of the dead. Lord have There you heard. go. There you go. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. How long did David prepare to fight against the lion? How long? I'll, I'll give you a tip. It was all his life. Yeah. Yes. 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 How long has God prepared mm. us for our giant? Mm. All, all, all our life. Our lives. All our life. Every giant you can think of that you're going to encounter, God has already prepared you. Giants of addiction, of poverty, of homelessness, affliction, marital discord, giant in your life. He's prepared us. He provided experience. And now he provides expectation. He builds faith that's going to do what? Glorify God. So even when Saul said, okay, go and fight him, but put on some fighting gear. <laughs> so you have the right clothes on. See, some, sometimes people want to tell you what to do, then they want to turn, turn around and tell you how to do it. Mm -hmm. Yes. But them other battles, I, I didn't win with your sword. 
those other battles, I, I didn't win with your armor on. Mm. You have to let let it do what it do when it do it. Mm -hmm. What works for you may not work for other people. Exactly. But God works for what? Everybody. God works for everybody. Thank you, Lord. So we have to understand that we don't know what God that that, that God has prepared that giant. We gotta believe that the giant can't come into my life unless. He's prepared for me. There are no yeah. way with there's no way with giants staggering this way into your life. Be like, up pops the weasel because the weasel goes pop. No. God is in control of every giant. Okay? Every situation, every circumstance, every attack of the enemy. Did I say every? Every, every, every. So David put those things on and he walked around. He was probably like, what in the world is this? I ain't never had, he never wore any armor. He was never in the military. He never had, he didn't have a sword in the field. What is all this? I tell you what. It was too heavy for him. Yeah. But it, it, it didn't fit. It didn't fit. It didn't fit. Exactly. Right. He was just a little boy. He didn't fit physically and it didn't fit spiritually. Spiritually. Nope. So what he, he did was his way. he said, I have not tested them. Oh, <laughs> oh glory to yeah. God. Ooh. Yeah. Ooh. Mm -hmm. Some of that stuff people are doing, they need to stop doing it and, and just go with what God has given you. You know what I mean? We, we, we get we get all kind of you know advice and you know what I mean. People try to help and they, you know what I mean. I I, I had a friend, um, and I won't call their name. But they live out of town anyway. They they called me. And they had a spiritual question for me, and they asked me, "Is it okay if I burn sage?" And I'm like, "What? Yeah, if I burn sage, because you know people told me if I burn sage, I can cleanse my house and clean." And I'm like, "Oh." Well, you can burn things, okay? You can burn toilet paper if you want to. I mean, it doesn't matter what you burn, but God ain't moved by what you burn. Mm -hmm. He's the only one that's going to rescue you. He's the only one that's going to bring peace to your house. He's the only one that's going to cleanse the atmosphere. That sage you burning ain't going to cleanse your atmosphere. Matter of fact, Amen. while you're burning that, go ahead and get you a quarter of olive oil. Drink some of that. <laughs> no. uh, I'm just saying. I mean, what, what else you want to do? Get, get a couple of crosses. Strap them to your back. Wear one on your forehead. We're talking about what God does. This is a mm. God thing. It ain't a sage Father, thing. God moves. On our behalf, God cleanses our atmosphere. God, and when I finished, I said, "Now, the choice is yours. I'm just letting you know what your options are. You can burn and hope for the best, or you can go to God, who is the best." Amen. Okay, people may have even asked you. I heard this burning sage wasn't nothing wrong with. It. I didn't say it was. Burn it. I mean, it's it'll, it'll burn. Burn it. Put some in the in the in the in the barbecue in your in your in your grill and put some sausages on. I mean, I don't know if it'll burn it, it, it'll provide heat, smoke, or whatever. Maybe it'll flavor your meat some. I don't know. What I know it won't do. It won't trump anything God is doing in your life. It won't change it. Hey. It won't slow it down. It won't speed it up because he's God. Amen. Amen. That reminds me when I preached is good that I was afflicted and all of the changes I was going through. 
<laughs> trying to make God move. Mm, yeah. <laughs> in the room with the Bible to my forehead and all this kind of foolish. Yeah. And uh like you said, God had it. I did yeah. none of that what I was trying to do was gonna make him move. Yeah. Oh, 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 we take we take uh Bible verses to the inside of our brassiers. I've seen that. My mom used to do tape them. The, 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 the little Bobby put a pin say the pin in it and, and be wearing it right over our heart. Got it. You know, I'm just saying. So, I mean, th th these are things that that we do when we don't know no better. But when you know better, do better. You do better. Right. Yep. Amen. And, know who, and know who God is. Yes, yes. Know who God is. He gives us an example. That he had already picked the not only picked the giant, he picked the battle. He picked the battles leading up to the giant to prepare him for the battle. So, so I thank God for the examples that God has given us, even in Tiffany, even in Loretta, even in Deborah. And I'm sure all of you are examples of your, of your own. We've all had to fight battles. We would not be the age we are if we hadn't had some giants that had to fall. Amen. 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 And if we're living and breathing and we're on this line, we got some giants right now. Amen. 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 But we should also have the expectation because of the experience that God has not only given us, but also given us in his word, that giants do fall. Mm. Yes. The bigger they are, the harder they fall. Any questions or comments, anything anybody wants to say? Please hey, feel free. On, I just thank God for this hey. night. Amen. Amen. Pastor, I was I was sitting here, man. I was uh listening to you and I, I was looking at all kinds of stuff, kind of identify this 94 that was that was ringing heavy at my heart. Mm. And and I just kept looking and kept looking and came upon Psalms 94. Mm. And and the whole scripture basically, uh the whole Psalms rather. Basically, all it's talking about is God, uh, how God will impart our uh, comfort to us in all of our circumstances. And mm. So I just thought that was real significant when you was talking about that. I went looking and, and I, you know, and I was like, and here we are talking about slaying giants and finding comfort in all our circumstances. And that's what mm. I found 94, Psalms 94. It's just thought that was real interesting. So thank you for sharing that. Amen. 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 See, if I had not shared that, I would have, I would not have known. God bless you, Michael. Thank you. Amen. Anybody else? Mm. Did it change? Did it change any perspectives? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. Amen. Pastor Elijah is sitting here with me. You. And he wanted. It's real important to him that I tell him that, that I tell you that he said hi. Okay, tell Elijah I said hello, my man. He said, yeah. He told me thank you. So he's sitting here. Calvin's upstairs, but Elijah's sitting down here with me listening. So mm -hmm. he he wanted to make sure was, I said hi. As he told me three or four times, and so I'm saying it so he can hear me. It was real important to him. Amen. 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 I'm, I'm looking for the day when I see him come down the aisle. I'm already, I'm already claiming. I'm already claiming. Amen. 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 Yes. I'd like to say something about what my son said to me a long time ago when I first got my maximum. He said, you got all this power in this car and you don't know what to do with it. Mm. I was wow. like, whoa. <laughs> I saw that in the spirit. I really mm. did, uh, Pastor Green. You do have to pay attention to your children. Yes. Amen. You yes. had all this power in your car, and you just mama. You know, you just you just <laughs> chastising me. <laughs> I saw it in a different way that uh, I wasn't using the power that God had put in me. 
That's the way I saw what was being yeah. said. Amen. 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 Well, I thank God for all you fighters that are on the line. Uh, I tell you, I, I could have gone to visit Loretta any other time in the hospital. And I knew that when I saw what I saw, the testimony of a mother fighting for her daughter. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, 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 it needed to be a movie. I should have had a, a, a camera, but I can only explain it. You know what I mean? The, the concern look, but also the peace. You know what I mean? The concern, but also the faith, you know? Mm -hmm. And then they turned around and said, we're gonna have to go all the way to Richmond. Mm -hmm. And we need to go right away. And God moved me to bring that before the church because you just don't go out of town and start staying in places. You need somebody to support. So you, sometimes we need tangible support. Yeah. I, want, I want the church to be in position one day that when somebody mm. has a need, the church can respond. When somebody Amen. needs help, the church can respond. The only way we Amen. can do that is that we respond beforehand in our giving so that we can respond Hallelujah. in ways to help yeah. people. And we don't have to mm. put them before the church and say, would you help them please? Not that she was indigent and wasn't going to be able to make it there, but it was God's mm -hmm. will that we support her in every way that we can. Amen. You know what I mean? so, so we have to really, really be in the business of doing God's will across the board Hallelujah. so that we're able and prepared to assist when we're supposed to. Mm. Amen. Amen. So, Amen. so I thank God for Amen. you. Amen. Thank you. Amen. 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 I just, I just want to I just want to thank God for sending me Cecilia, and Amen. she knows what she did. Amen. 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 But I don't know. Amen. But thank you. <laughs> My son, Cecilia, my son. I must have forgot that. I'm sorry. I, that's okay. You don't that's have to say anything. Just, okay, thanks. <laughs> but, but sometimes so I we, thank God for sending me to uh, Mount Zion. Was uh, <laughs> that the name of the church when I when I came to see you? Yeah, it was my name. Yes. Okay. Well, I'm I'm truly grateful because I was looking I was looking for what we got now, <laughs> and we finally got it. Hallelujah, Jesus. Amen. 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 Any other comments or anything anybody wanted to share before we? close but this was necessary pastor green because there are giants out there we need to know what that is necessary yeah. <laughs> that's all i got to say yeah amen yeah. Yeah. And, and just think what happens when we shout remember i said that earlier just, just think about yeah. how god looks at us when something comes against us, we say, oh, glory to God, hallelujah. Praise you, Lord. Amen. We bless the name, God. We magnify you, God. We glorify you, and God. Whatever it is, God, we give you glory mm -hmm. in the midst of it, in the face of yes. it. I stare at this giant and say, I bless the Lord at all times. Hallelujah. And his praise yes. shall continue to be yes. in my mouth. I, I, I bless the That's Lord. Not only I, I bless him. I know he heard me. And I know he's going to deliver me. And I know he's going to kill. Just think of our oh God going. Thank God. Hallelujah. That's what he wants us to do. Yeah. Amen. Give him all the praise and give him all the glory. Yeah. Yes. Amen. That's why y'all heard me say, bless the Lord, oh my soul. <laughs> with ex with mm. expectation. And all that is within me. Holy name. Yes, God. <laughs> and and he wants us to walk in it. Yeah. Yeah. I got an expectation. I expect victory. 
I expect Amen. victory. Amen. Because the Amen. same God that rescued me from an abandoned building when I was a baby, I could have been killed. I could have been kidnapped. The mm. same God yes. that rescued my marriage. The mm. same God that rescued me from a drug addiction. The same God. The same one will rescue me from whatever else that comes before me. I'm confident in that. And can the devil and hell move against me until God allows it. Amen. I, know, I know the devil's standing back like, ooh, let me at him, let me at him. Ooh, 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 ooh. <laughs> Just like he did, Joe. Mm, mm, well, God mm. do give us some chilling time. I mean, <laughs> Amen. The job, mm. you know, that you you get to chill a little bit sometimes. <laughs> like, like the song said, "I love God." You don't love God. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I won't sing it, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, guys, anything else? We'll close out. I thank you for laboring with me in the word. I thank you for everybody that's on, that's been on tonight. Uh, thank you for sharing, uh, for your questions. Uh, we bless God for, for what he's doing and what he's already done you know, and what he's going to do. It's just it's just God. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Somebody, somebody, uh, pray us or not. Jeanette, take us home. Let the words of my mouth. Let, let the words, the words, of, my let the words of, my of my mouth. And the meditation of my heart. And the meditation, and the meditation of, my of my heart. Be acceptable in thy sight. Be acceptable, Be acceptable in thy sight. In thy sight. O oh Lord, my strength. O oh Lord, my oh Lord, oh Lord, strength. Lord, my strength. And my redeemer. And my redeemer. And my redeemer. Amen. God bless Amen. everyone. Amen. God bless. Good night. Good night. All y'all giant night. killers. Good night. Okay, Good night. giant killers. God bless. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night, Michael. 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 Good night,